Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. I got this question about regarding Maven and Lombok, how does it work? And how should I configure uh, the Maven compiler so it actually includes the Lombok and then also uh, other frameworks? I will not go into the other frameworks. That was a, the question was quite uh, it was quite big. There was a, also questions to other frameworks like uh, something called Mapstruct. I will uh, I will make I'll create another video with that. Let us first focus on how Maven works and how um, yeah, how the how how the annotation uh, preprocessor works uh, with the Maven compiler. Plugin. Uh, first of all, I created this project right here by pre by pressing File, New, and then Project. And this time, I chose Maven instead of usually I always uh, choose Kator or or Spring Initializer. Um, and then, but this time, I actually I pressed Maven and then I pressed. Then I looked for the archetype because if if you're not used to um, if you're not used to Maven, then there is some archetype which is kind of the default template for how for creating a, an application. And then there's there's one named uh, Quick Start. Oh, uh, let me just go back here. So if I, if I press here somewhere, wait from archetype, then I can actually search for the one that is called Quick Start. This is a good way to start. For, uh, this is a good one to start from. Then it just says that, okay, you have some code and you want to create a JAR file. That that is actually what it says. And then I press next. Then I gave it a good name, and then I press next, next, finish, and then I end up with this uh, project that I have right here. Here's the pump file. Here's the, here's the pump file. It's set where the uh, source uh, seven one one dot seven uh, to begin with. I changed this to eleven instead. Um, another thing was that uh, then I, then I went and found the uh, project uh, Lombok uh, dependency right here, and then I added that. You can find that on uh, yeah product. Uh, I think it's project Lombok org. Then you can find that uh, dependency right there, and uh, I got this JUnit already from the Arch type, so that is uh, that was already there from out of the box. So the next thing I did was I created a small data class right here named Train, and I added a field model and a float max speed, and then I added something like no arcs constructor and all arcs constructor and the add data. So that means that then I'll get getters and setters and equals method and yeah, the has code, and I will get a no args constructor as a, con a constructor without any arguments. I'll get a constructor with all the arguments. That means all the fields I mentioned. So I should get this automatically. Then I went to the app. This class was created by, for me already because I chose the archetype quick start. So then I got this class here. Then I added, uh, and I got this line already, uh, hello world. And then I added new train, and then I gave it, yeah, then I created a new train. I'm not that good with train models yet. I have to read up on the train models. I just called named this T800. It's probably a Terminator or something like that. But um, yeah, that was the name that this one got. Uh, and then, uh, of course, in first, first I went to IntelliJ, and then I saw that I could actually run this class right here, run app. And that worked, so I was happy. But this is IntelliJ, and so maybe, maybe IntelliJ did something behind my back. Actually, it does because there is something called the Lombok plugin that I have installed and also enabled for this project right here. So, what does it also work now that we, if we built it? Um, and yes, it actually does. First off, when we are dealing with uh, Maven, then we are dealing with life cycle stage, stages. So we have a lot of uh, life cycles right here: clean, validate, compile. Test blah 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 blah, and then we have then I have a lot of uh, uh, plugins right here. This is the plugins that I uh, have added, and uh, here we have the we have the Maven compiler plugin. That's actually what uh, does the magic here. Uh, so let us try to build it. Let us just try to clean install. Clean means that it deletes the target folder right there, which is right there. And install means that it will compile it, compile the code, and will create a jar file. And then it will uh, install it into the local Maven repository. Everybody has a default Maven, uh, lo local Maven repository. Then it will also place the jar file in in that repository with the version that we have to set somewhere. And now it says build succeeded. That is really really good. So I go to my target folder, and I can see I have a jar file right there. Um, there was actually one more thing I added. Let me just uh, show that I went down to the to the jar plugin, the jar plugin right here. Here's the jar plugin, and then you need to add this configuration right here to say that this is the main class, or else you will not get the uh, manifest file. You will, not, you will not get the manifest file inside the jar file. So you need to say that this is the, the class that you want to run. So that means that when people are running your jar file, then this is the class that will be that will actually be run. So I also added that. 
After I did that, then I could right click and then I can actually just press run inside Intelia, run the, the jar file. And I actually already did that, so I have it up here. And let me just show you the configuration. There's nothing, this is just default configuration. And then I can press uh, run like this, run. And then I get hello world and my train uh, returned like that. So it all works. So that is really, really cool. Uh, and but what, how come it actually works? Because I have not, I have not enabled any, uh, any annotation, uh, uh, yeah, uh, any pre uh, annotation pre compiler or anything uh, like that. Uh, how can how can it actually work? That I, I just add the, the, I just add a dependency like that, the Lombok dependency, and then, and then everything works out of the box. I'm getting the uh, annotations. Um, I'm getting a new uh, Java class created from all these, uh, from all these annotations I'm adding there. And we, we can also see if I go to my target and to my class, and I can actually go look at my trained class. And I actually, I can see here that I have my getters, I have my setters, I have my equals method that has been all written now. Um, where do we all get, how come that I can get all this uh, magic uh, all the, uh, just by adding that dependency? And that is because if we go to the documentation for the Apache Maven compiler plugin, then we can actually read that the the class bars elements to supply as annotation processor path can be set here. If it's not set, then the compiler will detect annotation processes only in. Oh, if it is set, then will be uh, then the compiler will detect annotation process only in those uh, class path elements. If omitted, and uh, and that is the case by default, then the default class path will be will be used to detect annotation processors. And there are, of course, annotation processes. That exact, that's exactly what the, uh, a big part of Lombok consists of. Of course, it needs to it needs to process all the annotations that they are using, and then it generates code out from that. So that means that the yeah the this plugin here, this, this cool uh, Maven compiler plugin, it it it, it finds the Lombok uh, annotation processor, and then it uses that uh, and runs that when we are compiling our code. So it it works uh, automatically out of the box. If you want to configure it, you can just set the path just like this. The one of the yeah part of the question that it was a long question. Part of the question I got was, uh, could you please show us how to configure it? I'll say go to this uh, go to this page right here and then uh, read how to set it up. Um, I will um, yeah. So that this is how to set it up. We can we can add compiler arguments and um, we can set the path if we don't want to. If for some reason we do not want to um, just look for the, on the class path, then we can actually just look in the path that we wish to look for. Um, it's pretty well uh, documented. So that is Maven, and uh, so that is Maven and the the annotation preprocessor. I would say another thing uh, is that uh, then I created if if I create a Spring Boot application instead, if I create a Spring Boot application instead. And if, if I go to my pump.xml file, then it's pretty short. And that is because uh, in Maven, we can use something called a parent pump. That means that we can actually inherit uh, functionality from a parent uh, pump file. And that is exactly what's, uh, what Spring uses a lot. So I cannot, see, I cannot see any Maven compiler in my pump file right now. I have a, I have a Spring Boot Maven plugin uh, uh, right here. That is a plugin that Spring made. I have some dependencies right here, uh, and I also have my Lombok dependency right here. And optional true that is actually a bit important, or uh, because we act, we only need it we only need it when we compile. We do not need to add it um, to the library itself. I don't remember if I forgot to actually to set this to true in my in my other project. I'll go see in just a minute. Ah, let's let us go check check it out. Uh, what did I do that? So, yeah, we set scope provided instead, and that is exactly the same. So. Optional uh, true. That means that um, yeah, we we don't we don't need it actually. So it will um, we only need it when we compile the code. We do not need it when we run the code itself. But where is my Maven compiler? Where is the plugin? So maybe I want to configure it. Right, I cannot find it. I cannot find it. But if we go to the Spring Boot parent right there, the artifact parent. I just hold Control and then I click the parent right there. Then I end up in the parent pump, and inside the parent pump. If then you can go and look for Maven compiler plugin, and then you can see it's right here, and then you can see how it's actually configured um, from Spring by default. You can all write this if you copy this part right here, and if you added that to your, um, you add that to, to your own plugins. Here we have plugins. 
then you can actually just override it. That's how it works. So if you want this to be true or whatever, false, or you want to add some more uh, configuration right here, you just do it like that. And then um, then your your version of the plugin, your configuration of it will be the one that, that, that counts. You should be... Yes, you should be aware you can actually break the spring, the whole spring build process if you are if you're if you're playing too much with the plugins that spring rely on. So um, if you can, then I would uh, definitely recommend you not to overwrite the plugins that spring already use because it could give problem. Maybe it doesn't give problem right now, but then the upgrading and the using some special configuration that um, that you then overwrite with your own plugin um, configuration right here. But yes, so that's actually I just want to show you that I also created a train class right here with add data. And I just want to show you that I can actually, if I go to Maven, then I can then I can write uh, Maven and then I can choose clean install. If you choose minus X, then you get a lot of extra information. And it's like the minus minus info in Gradle. And when we're dealing with Gradle, then we are dealing with tasks instead of life cycles. When we're dealing with, yeah, when dealing with Maven, then there's life cycles. And then there's also something like, um, then we're also dealing usually with profiles because maybe one profile, we just, we want to do something special and another profile, we do not want to do something special. While in Gradle, um, we do not use the profiles in Gradle itself. Um, so uh, whether you prefer, Maven or Gradle, it usually is, it's up to Maven is a little bit more, uh, it's a little bit more with huge lumps of, uh, of, of it's just like uh, putting big blocks together. Um, and they are more, it, it, I think it's usually more standard, standard, uh, of course, it's more standard. Um, with Gradle, you usually end up with, with developers sitting and writing small scripts and creating variables to make everything work. Uh, and Maybe there was actually already a way that they, that they could have this functionality work the, the way that they wanted to out of the box, but then they did not read the documentation, so they just created two small uh, variables and then they excluded some classes just because you can or something like that. Uh, I think Maven is more, it's usually cleaner. The the, the pump.xml file are usually cleaner, but um, they're a bit, uh, yeah, they're a bit more verbose because it's XML, of course, then it's, it takes up some more space. So whether you like Graven or Gradle or Maven, it's uh, yeah, they are both good and they both do uh, a good job building and uh, producing the artifacts that we need. I would say so. I like both uh, technologies, but uh, of course, let me know in the, in the comments if you have any preferences and and why. But I think I answered the question now, right? Um, the question was something with the the something with the Lumbok and how does the annotation pre preprocessor processor work when we are using Lumbok? So we just add it to the class path, and then because we're using the Maven compiler plugin, then it will be used automatically in the compile phase, which is right here. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great evening. Hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.